we started with the thiruvar payan and yesterday we had a small introduction about the other umapadi shivam and the people who have written commentaries and also we just started understanding the book how it is being framed that is with the one sloga or one poem on lord ganesha and with the 10 topics each topic 10 10 poems 100 poems at that this what yesterday we were speaking and we started with the first one as the the nature of supreme that is god we started with that and the first song we were dealing yesterday in tamil it is agara uyir pol arivahi engum nigaril irai nirkum niraindu so we were telling like the letter a the incomparable lord is all intelligence and pervades everything without change so it's like the letter a it is the supreme and which is in which is involved in all the actions today and it is available at throughout the universe at everywhere that's what yesterday we spoke today the second poem we are moving it it says about being as a full of are everywhere and it is all with intelligence what is the benefit the souls are going to get from that so here he says the biggest difference between the god and soul we have understood earlier soul as a connection with the pasa that is the anava mala deity or vanity or ego we were talking god by naturally he doesn't have any connection at all with the, this vanity so all the sins we do all the despairs we experience are all basically created because of this vanity or this ego whereas this cannot approach god and when god approaches it cannot stand in front of him it is something like the darkness cannot exist in front of light so god is something like a light where this anava is a darkness cannot exist when he comes so absolutely there is no connection between god and the darkness or the ego so whatever since there is no connection and god's nature itself is supreme bliss yesterday we are told so it's full of happiness there is no despair no sorrow thing as long as god is concerned earlier we have been discussing about his eight characters of god of the one of the eight characters is in tamil we call it as inbame vadivana one which means he is full of happiness so people who approach him they get the happiness people who worship him they are happy with that so it is a material full of happiness so now god what he says the at the first poem he says he is all of intelligence and he is existing uh, existent with the whole of universe with all this as a soul what we are going to get the benefit or how it's going to happen he says lord with the his sakti that's a power makes all these souls to get away from this ego and rest under his feet so that all the souls will get all the happiness all the time that's how it is so he it is his kindness and also by power it's only possible by him because the souls do not have the power to get rid of the anava or this ego on its own so it, somebody has to do which can be done only by god because he is the substance by nature itself has no connection with this ego a person 
who is basically healthy can only treat the people who has a disease. If the person who is going to treat is also having a disease, then he cannot. Same way. God, since he doesn't have this ego, he is trying to treat us from the disease of this ego and trying to take away from ego so that all the bad experiences in this world, what we are experiencing, the root cause is eliminated, so we are safe. And where he places us, he takes us to his feet. So it is full of happiness. That's our ultimate. So here says in this poem, Tan nilamai, which means his position. Tan nilamai. Mannu irhal. Mannu irhal means here it's the souls which are always existing. Here man means it is not the soil or the sand. No. Here mannu irhal means it is the souls which are also a permanent substance, what we have learnt earlier. God, soul, and the sanava. That is padi, pasu, pasam. This all the three are ever existent. They will not get destroyed. So since soul is also like that, that's what he is meaning, mannu irhal, which means soul which is always existing. So mannu irhal, tannilamai is position. Mannu irhal sara, which means these souls, all these souls, to approach his feet or to reach his feet, sara. Tarum sakti pinnamilan engal piran. He is actually having the power. That is a sakti, we call it. The goddess, we call it. So he is having the goddess with him, which actually operates and takes this soul away from this ego and taking him to Lord's feet. One thing we need to understand in Shiva, in Saivism, God and Goddess are it's only the one product, appears in two forms. There is no difference. So Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati or Shakti, whatever we call. This is actually one material only, showing it as in two forms, that's it. Whereas God and soul are two different materials, whereas in the moksha, or when we attain his feet, it is more or less one, like that the combination is going to be. That combination is called as Advaita, which means two material, but forming two are resulting into one, that is Advaita. Whereas here, God is one, but showing in two forms, God and Goddess. This is called in Tamil Dadanmiyam. So Advaitam and Dadanmiyam. The connections or relations between the God and soul is called Advaitam. Whereas the connection actually the God and Goddess, which means one metal showing us two, that relation is called as Dadanmiyam. So as Dadanmiyam, now Goddess, Goddess, God and Goddess are the same with the Goddess. He is actually, in fact, God, Lord Shiva is a material which are full of jnana, that is the wisdom. Whereas Sakti, that is, is another form of Sakti, that is full of power to operate. He is full of wisdom, she is full of power. So that's what we used to say. I am not able to do this. I don't have the Shakti, we used to say, which means the power to operate is Shakti. Power of wisdom is the Shiva. So in our olden days, people used to say, you don't do anything. Just to be there, sit there. Sivanayanir, which means action all comes from goddess. Brain or the wisdom Power of wisdom is God. Power of operation comes from Shakti. So here now what God does? His power of operation works out. 
that is called shakti he never exists alone always shakti is with him which means god and goddess are together always that's how in tamil we have normally we call it as ammai appan which means ammai is goddess appan is god they both are always together for the simple purpose of serving for the souls to help the souls they are always together that's how this song says and what help they are doing taking us away from this anavamala the ego so that we will not have any sufferings thereafter and taking us to his feet and to keep us always on that happy frame that's how he says tannilamai which was his position to achieve manviril all these souls to achieve tarum sakti pinnamilan which means he is always with the goddess pinnam means actually different he is pinnamilan there is no difference they always stay together god and goddess for helping these souls that so james alas simply says the eternal souls will attain divine nature that is god's feet divine nature by his arul shakti that is a goddess grace we call it as love or grace or kindness or shakti power all is are of the same word so arul shakti which is one with our lord that is available with him there is a another uh, shastra of the 14 called tirukali tripadiya the first song itself says ammayappare ulagukku ammayappar ammayappar vandu aparise alippar ammayappar which means god and goddess it is not only for you or me for the entire world the entire universe they are they are the god and goddess ammayappare ulagukku ammayappar அம்மை அப்பர் வந்து அப்பரிசே அளிப்பர் தே கிவ் த கிஃப்ட் டு அஸ் வாட் கிஃப்ட் டேக்கிங் அஸ் டு ஹிஸ் ஃபீட் தட்ஸ் வாட் திஸ் சாங் சேஸ் தன்னிலமை மண்ணுயிர்கள் சார தரும் சக்தி பின்னமிலான் எங்கள் பிறான் த எட்டர்னல் சோல்ஸ் வில் அட்டைன் டிவைன் நேச்சர் பை ஹிஸ் அருள் சக்தி தட் இஸ் ஹிஸ் கிரேஸ் திஸ் புக் இட் சில் சேஸ் திருவருள் விச் மீன்ஸ் சக்தி த கிரேஸ் ஹிஸ் கைண்ட்னஸ் so arul shakti which is one with our lord it is available to lord in thirumurais of gnana sambandha rappar or sundara the 12th thirumurais this point is stressed many where there is a gnana sambandha thevara it it is says sarndavarki inbangal thalaikkum vannam which means those who have made association with the lord for them the inbam happiness is assured saarndavarku inbangal thalaikkum vannam nerndavan nerilayodum koodi nerndavan means here it's lord shiva nerilayodum with the goddess he always stays with the goddess to provide happiness for all the people not only people all the souls who approach them saarndavarku inbangal thalaikkum vannam nerndavan nerilayodum koodi தேர்ந்தவர் தேடுவார் தேடச் செய்தே சேர்ந்தவன் உறைவிடம் திருவல்லமே தெர் இஸ் அ பிளேஸ் கால்டு திருவலம் இன் தமிழ்நாடு நியர் வேலூர் தேர் ஞான சம்பந்தர் ஆக்சுவலி ஆன் காட் ஹீ சிங்ஸ் திஸ் சாங் ஸோ விச் மீன்ஸ் காட் அண்ட் காடஸ் ஆர் ஆல்வேஸ் டுகெதர் ஃபார் த பர்பஸ் ஆஃப் சர்விங் டு த சோல்ஸ் அண்ட் டிடாச்சிங் திஸ் ஈகோ ஃப்ரம் த சோல்ஸ் அண்ட் டேக்கிங் தம் டு தேர் ஃபீல் So, tannilamai mannuirhil saara tarum sakti pinnamilan. Sakti pinnamilan means, pinnam means getting different. Pinnamilan, there is no division. So, they stay together. That's what he says. Sakti pinnamilan, engal piran. Piran means God, our God. That's what he says. The eternal souls will attain divine nature by his arul shakti, which is one with our Lord. the next one he speaks again about the god he says there is no comparison for his greatness he is the greatest nothing can be compared with him 
and also for his subtlety. For an example, we are living in this world. What is the size of the world today? Maybe science can say so much of square kilometers, it is such big. But one thing we know, it is so big because right from Australia to US, if you take it, or it's the whole universe is so big. How this size looks up in front of him, people say, the size of the world or the universe in front of God's purview, how small it becomes, you know. Normally in the morning sunlight through a window when the light passes in at home, we may see a lot of some dust particles here and there, so small particles in the sunlight it is seen. Our world is where we are living. This universe is like one such a particle in front of God, they say. In nulai kadirin tun anupuraya siriya vaha periyon, the Tiruvasan says. So, which means we can understand how big he will be then. This whole universe, we are not able to measure the distance now. Well, maybe this earth we can measure. Then what about the other planets? So big. But this is just like a dust particle in front of him. Means we can see how big he is great. At the same time, he writes so subtle also, which means even that on the dust particle he is available, he is existent in that too. Which means one way is the biggest, the other way even with the tiniest thing also he is available. That is his greatness on both the ways. So the song says, Perumaikkum, Nunmaikkum. Then he says, Per Arulkum. Arul means actually grace, what we are speaking. Per Arul, which means he is so kind enough. He says nothing can be compared for his greatness, for his subtlety, for his kindness or the grace. And one more thing he says, Petrin Arumaikum, which means the benefit we achieve because of his kindness. Even that cannot be compared with anything. So he says about God four things he says. His greatness, his subtlety, his kindness, and the, we, the benefit we achieve because of that kindness. These four have no comparison. Perumaikkum, Nunmaikkum, Perarulkum, Petri narumaikum, upu in my own. Upu means comparison. Upu in my own. It is not there. So you cannot compare this with anything in this universe today. James Nelson Sample says, in his greatness, in his subtlety, in his boundless grace, which means everyone is kind of. Even in the world today, I am kind enough, you are kind enough, everyone has a kindness. But there is a limitation. You may, we may help 10 people today, maybe 20 people today. Beyond that, we say, Sorry, Baba, it's enough. It's boring, I can't do. Because there's a limitation. But his kindness he is not only helping human beings, he's helping all the animals. He's helping even trees to grow. Everywhere it's taken care of way. So his grace is, he says, boundless grace. That's no boundary for him. So he is in his greatness, in his subtlety, in his boundless grace, in the priceless benefit he confers on man. The benefit what he is giving to the soul, that another same place is priceless, which means you cannot measure the value of the gift what he has given. It is 
phraseless. You cannot say anything about it. So for his, all these four, he is beyond all comparison. For this, all these four points, nobody can be even thought of getting compared with him. He is beyond the comparison. His greatness, his subtlety, his boundless grace or the kindness, and the priceless benefit he confers on the souls he gives he is simply beyond all comparison. That's what the song says. Perumakkum, nunmakkum, per arulkum, petrin arumakkum, uppu in my arm. That's what he says. That's in many uh, songs we used to do. Jnana Sambandar sings at Trichurapalli. There's a song. Nandrudayanai, Tiyadillanai, Narai Vellir, Undrudayanai, Umayurubaha Mudayanai, Sendradayad Thiruvudayanai, he says. Which means it is with your effort or my effort, we can't reach him. Which means he is beyond our comparison, beyond our thought process. But he is kind enough in taking us there. He is at such a height that you and me, we, we cannot even dream of. It is not that we cannot go. Even we cannot dream. But he is so kind enough and lifting us to his place. That's how Sendradayad, Thirudayane, Sirapalli Kundrudayane, Kurayan Kulam. He is singing this song and the God as a temple at Trichirapalli, Trichy. So that's how he says. The next song he says, so he is the one who has created everything for the benefit of the souls. So there should be reason for creation. So he has created everything for the benefit of souls he has given. At the same time, when a time comes, he destroys also. That's also for some reason he does that. And of the last thing, when he even the complete the world, he takes into his fold. Again, after giving rest for the souls for a time, he starts with the new creation of whatever, whatever he has closed or taken in his fold, again releases. This is, does that. So first time when he has done, we call it as Mudal Urpati. Whereas he does the, taking everything into his fold, which is called the Sankaram, which means destroying everything. Again, it's being recreated. That is called the Punar Urpavam. That is Punar Urpati. So these souls, he says, he has the power or the kindness to create everything. He has the kindness to give everything to the souls. And also he has the kindness to take into his fold for giving a rest period. With all this, souls out only one place we can go as a refuge, that is his feet. We can't have place anywhere other than that, which means he is saying, he is praising Lord that Lord as can give refuge to all the souls in that world because Souls do not have a refuge anywhere. That's what he says. As, aki, aki means making everything. Aki. Yavayum alit. By alit means giving to the souls. Aki yavayum alit. Asudan adanga. Because of this anavamala. To give rest, he is taking into his fold. Asudan adanga. Pokum avan poha puhal. This soul doesn't have a place other than his feet to go as a refuge. That's what is Puhal. Puhaladam means that's what it is. He, it is who originates everything. James Nala simply says, he, who, he, it is who originates everything, sustains it because it has, so whatever he has created, he allows it for a period to stay, sustains it, and when everything is destroyed and resolved into its primordial maya, 
See, what it happens in this world? From Maya only, we got this body, the <coughs> organs of the body, this world where we are existing, <coughs> the worldly creatures, materials in the world. All these are all created by God, but created from Maya. There are four things. The body, the organs of the body, like the ear, mouth, whatever it is. Then this world as a structure. Then lot of things in the world for us to enjoy today. So all the materials in the world. So all these four are created by Lord purely for the purpose of soul to experience. But from where he created, it is from Maya. He has done it from Maya. What it happens? He creates, makes us to experience for some time. After some time, he destroys it. Reason being, he wants to give rest to soul for some time. He has given this body. He has created for the soul. And he allows to stay like this or sustain it. Maybe for 75 years, 80 years or 90 years. After that, what he is doing? He destroys the body. Again, I am telling, he destroys the body, not the soul. Soul will be there. So what happens? This body gets destroyed. After some time, another body is being given and we are given a rebirth. We are the same soul, but different body comes in. Why he is destroying? Leaving all his relations so sad. Why he does with his kindness? Purely it is because of kindness he is doing. That is, this soul is already tired in this world with his 70 years, 80 years of full of operations with his body. So he wants to give, because all the experience today, what we are getting is, let us be very clear in understanding, the experience is for the soul, not for the body. Body is a tool. The experience is the, for the soul. Today I am speaking. You are listening. It is body helps you to listen. Your ear is helping. But actually your soul is listening. I am speaking. My mouth actually helps me to deliver what I wish to say. My body helps actually to say. But the soul is doing the job. So whatever, because if we say it is not the soul, if it is the body which has the experience, then what will happen? After, once you become dead, then also your body should have the experience. It is not so. So what is, what is the difference between the birth and death? This body, as long as being operated by another particle, another material, that is the soul. It is alive. When it becomes, this soul has gone out of body, the body becomes unoperational. So that's how it is. So body does not experience. The experience is for the soul. So God gives everything. So what happens? Or when this soul carrying this body, wherever it goes for the last, for the last 50 years it is doing, Maybe if I live for 80 years, 80 years, so once it, the soul becomes tired, so God gives a rest by removing the body. It is his kindness. So leaving the soul to relax a bit. Then again, based on our karma, the next birth is planned by him. Another body is fitted and is sent. So whatever now he is destroying from where, actually energy cannot be destroyed, we know. So whatever is created, where he puts it, destroys means he takes to him. So where he puts it, all has come out of Maya. Same way when it's destroyed, all gets into Maya. So Maya gets into his power. That's a God of Shakti. And Goddess gets into him. This is how it is. Then going back, it happens. Our body, our world, our worldly things, all getting into Maya. Maya getting into Shakti. Sakti getting into Lakshya. That's what he says. 
Jamal Assembly says, everything is destroyed and resolved in its primordial Maya. He alone remains. When he destroys everything, he alone remains. That is his supremacy. All the materials have been destroyed. All the worldly bodies, worldly materials have been destroyed and taken into Maya. And Maya taken into Shakti or the goddess. And Shakti herself also gets into Lord Shiva. So at that time, actually, what we call it as Mahasankaram, which means all are destroyed. But the only one person, Lord Shiva, remains. That's what he says. He alone remains. The last refuge from which there is no return. For the souls to get into, he is there. So, he, so when everything is destroyed also, he is available. So for all of us, the only refuge point is he is the person. That's what he says. He, it is who originates everything, sustains it. And when everything is destroyed and resolved into its primordial maya, he alone remains the last refuge from which there is no return. Which means that's how his importance and we need to worship him because for us the last refuge point is only he. Nobody in the world. That's what he says. The next song he says, whether he has any form or he doesn't have any form because people in temple we see one Shivalinga, when we see Nadraja, when we see goddess, so many. But we are not able to see him actually the truth. So whether he has a form or he does not have a form, we, when he is having a form means we call in Tamil Uruvam. I have a body. That is the shape. Like this, whether God has or not, he says. Aruvum, Uruvum, Aringerk, Arivam, Uruvam, Udayan, Ulan. Ease of Uruvam, which means he has the shape. At the same time, he is also Aruvam. Aruvam means actually he does not have anything. One more thing he says, Aruvuruvam, which means part of this, part of that. That is, whatever he comes as Lord Shiva, this, that is actually Uruvam, because Lord Nataraja, we are having a shape, we are seeing, Lord Ganesha, we are seeing, is our Uru. And we, he doesn't have any shape like that, so the Aruvam. One more thing he says, Aru Uruvam, which means it is not there, but it is there. That is the Shivalinga shape. Because if you say Shivalinga has a shape or not, means yes, it has a shape. At the same time, whether we have light lock Nataraja, we are able to see the ears, we are able to see the eyes, we are able to see the legs. No. Which means it is not there. So that shape is called Shivalinga, which is neither it has a form, nor it can be said there is no form. That is Aruvuruvam. So this is how it is. For the Aringer, he says, Aringer means actually for the wise. That is by maturity, the top level people. For them is purely the jnana or the wisdom, intelligence. That's how it is. Since now we are at this stage, we worship like this. When we go up, 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 we are able to concentrate only on him. We are able to do a worship in a time that our brain is not detached with any other attention. We are able to concentrate only on him. That level wise are intelligent when we become. He acts in our brain itself. We are able to realize him. Now we have to go to the temple and see and try to realize. At home we have to do the puja and try to realize. But with the law, many years of practice, as yesterday we were saying, the Anushtanam or the practice when you go up, up, up by doing the puja on a day-to-day -day basis. That helps us to realize his wisdom in our intelligence itself. That's what he says. Aruvum, Uruvum, Aringerku Arivam, which means Aringer means the wise. That is that our, for them, it is in their brain itself. Aringerku Arivam, Uruvum Udayan Ulan. He has the shapes also. James Nalasam says, 
is a rupee. Rupee means actually is with a form only. An a rupee, it doesn't have a form, formless. And is a rupa rupee, that's what I was saying. One with the form, with and without form. Aruvam and Uruvam, both. So he is a rupee with a form, that's a shape. He is an arupi because he doesn't have a form, formless. And he is also rupa rupi, which means one with and without forms. To the wise, he is, a, he is pure chit, jnana or intelligence. So as long as we, we are growing in, in this path, sacred path, the earlier stages we wish to have a better idea, so we have these shapes. Once we get out of it slowly, becomes Lord Shiva, only Sivalinga we worship. After that also with the wise we become. We become at a top level of maturity, the souls. When it becomes, we are able, God is, we are able to realize his intelligence in our just mind itself. That is the jnana or the intelligence. So he says he is a rupee, one with the form. He is an arupi, formless. And he is a rupa rupi, that is one with and without form. To the wise, that is the matured souls, he is a pure chit, jnana or intelligence, that says. The next uh, son says, he is also intelligent. We are also intelligent. We spoke on that day. How the difference is? Our intelligence is something. We can understand when people explain. We come to know when people inform. But for him, he can actually take things, he can understand things with no one to inform him. He on his own knows what is happening around him, everywhere. And what is going to happen in future. Everything he knows. For us, we need somebody to inform. Even though we are intelligent, because we are able to understand when somebody is informing. This anava or maya, they don't have brains. So if, what is the difference? Even if we inform, they don't understand. Today I am speaking your understanding, but I am speaking through a speaker or a laptop. This laptop cannot understand what I speak. But you are able to understand what I speak because we are all intelligent. But for us also, for me, somebody has to teach. For you, I have to teach. But whereas God, no one has to teach. He knows everything. That's what in this says. Pallar uyir unarum panmayana mel uruvan illadhan engal irai. Pallar uyir, which means all the souls. So many souls. Pallar. Pallar means too many. Pallar souls. Unarum Pandme, which means how they receive messages, how they come to know. God's stature is different. How we come to know, somebody teaches. For above me, somebody teaches. Today, actually, maybe I am teaching you. And somebody taught me. But that person was taught by somebody. And his teacher was somebody. So like that it is. So we are always having somebody above us. But like that, Nobody is above for God, he says. Pallar uir, unarum, pallar uir, unarum panmayana, mel uruvan illadhan engal irai, which means nobody is about. Here, because I have been taught by my Guruji. My Guruji has been taught because he has, he has got a Guru. And that Guru got a Guru. That's how it comes. That's how we all come to know. My father told me this. My grandfather told my grandfather this. Like that it comes. So for all the souls, somebody is above for us to teach, to guide. Because without that guidance, souls cannot know on its own. How we get? His stature is different. God. He doesn't need anyone above him to guide him. So, Pallaruvir for him, nobody is above him. That's what he says. Our Lord, 
unlike the souls james nalla sample writes our lord unlike the souls which can only understand with his light souls souls can only understand that too with his light which means he has to help even though i tell you god has to help my guru ji told me but god has helped me to understand god has helped him to teach me so our our lord unlike the souls which can only understand with his light as no one superior to him that's how it is so we the souls our brains are in such a way somebody has to teach us whereas for him he is so the supreme he is the most supreme so he stands at that point on his own he learns he doesn't need anyone so nobody is superior to him that's how it says the next song says when he is at a such a high level because for us each and every small messages somebody has to inform or we don't know what is happening just at our neighbor's home we don't know somebody has to tell us but he is at a such a stage that he knows everything and by timeless bounds whatever when it is going to happen how it is going to happen what how this world will be there after 100 years everything he knows so we are at a such a lower position he is at such a top position so is it really possible that we can go and achieve, approach him how is it that's a doubt he creates he says it is possible ana ariva yahalan adiyavarku vannada kanalam he is so kind enough with his devotees even though he is at such a great height if somebody prays he immediately responds he comes to their rescue he is with them even sometimes the people who are at the devas they are at the top world even they may not have this opportunity but he leaves them and he comes here he is ready to help all these people who are in this universe who are worshiping him who are doing a systematic prayer or simply who feel we have no other refuge point you are the person and when we just to fall in his feet he immediately takes care of us because of his kindness by that time he doesn't think of our karma from where we came why we this bad experience it is because of a punishment for any bad karma we have done no it is his kindness he keeps all at suspense okay let us take care first let us attend to this man who is need of my help he just comes down he comes down from there even leaving those people out. that's how he says ana arivaya halan adiyavark adiyavar means we are all his devotees adiyavarku one order kaanadaman one order means there vinulaham the people nadars means devas even this devar they have not experienced him fully but he is ready to come and help us that's how even in tiruvasam it says then palachole payilum siruguyile idu kelni van palithu man bugundu manidarai aatkonda vallal even he lives there and comes down and he is taking care of as that is his kindness it says so jm nalla sample writes to the wise who approach his feet wise means actually matured enough to approach his feet he dwells in their hearts inseparably he just dwells in the heart of the people who are making that sincere prayer so he dwells in the heart in their hearts inseparably so he is just with the souls as the supreme intelligence as a supreme intelligence he dwells in their heart with no place for separation he has not been comprehended even by the devas that's what it is he has not been comprehended by he has not been understood fully 
he has even the devas have not have the experience of enjoying with him fully whereas he is kind enough to come and give that experience for the souls who are at this world making a sincere prayer that's what it says he to the wise wise means actually mature who has approached his feet was approached he dwells in their hearts inseparably as the supreme intelligence he has not been comprehended even by the devas that's about is because even in periya purana or sekla swami tells periya purana we are able to understand the importance of his devotees saivism is one the importance of one philosophy of saivism is we not only worship god we worship his devotees also the devotees are given such importance even some top wise people say you are given only one chance choice now god is there devotees are there whom you will worship means he says we need to worship the devotees that is how even sundarmurthy swami says adiyark adiyen we are supposed to worship the devotees that much importance is given because god is always available inseparably with the devotees so when we worship the devotees automatically we are worshiping the god also because he is also sitting along with them that is how shekla's periyavaram also speak adiyarudan nam pulo and he is telling so where god say stays means he is staying in the heart of the devotees pandanai viraliyum niyum nin adiyar palangudil thorum elundaruliya parane this what thiruvasan says pandanai viraliyum niyum means he and goddess both he comes with the family and stays where adiyar palangudil which means the wise men or the people or mature souls in their heart which means at their home he says that's what now he says uh general some places he dwells in their hearts inseparably so he is staying in that as a supreme intelligence he has not been comprehended even by the devas even the devas sitting at the top they might not have got this godly experience whereas the souls the mature souls in this universe are given the opportunity by god that's what he says ana ariva yahalan adiyavarku vannadar kanadavan so today we have seen around six poems already we have done one yesterday apart from the lord ganesha sloga so from one we have done yesterday from 2 to 7 six we have done today tomorrow actually it's not there thursday evening again the same time we will meet